Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going over a watch made by a company, Benrus, and this is a Benrus Classic Heritage. Before I do that, I have myself a glass here. I'm gonna pour myself a glass of red wine for all you watch people who still wear a watch these days. Oh, nice. And I'm gonna start with quick wrist check. What's on my wrist today? On my right hand, I have lovely Explorer 1. This has been um, with me for I don't know, about a month, I'll say. And it's absolute stunner of a watch. I'm really enjoying the Explorer one. And on my left hand, I have my Tudor Black Bay 58 on a Tropic rubber. And what else do I have here? I have my pair of lovely Vostok watches. If you have any interest in watches like these, I have a, a video on this one, how affordable watches can be really cool and really fun. Take a quick look at the video. I'll put these down here. And I also have my amazing Retras Diver. There's a video on this one if you have any interest. Gorgeous little guy. And I've got this in today. This is a field watch, a man watch, marathon. Navigator, beautiful older piece with plexiglass. And this is a very, very comfortable watch. 39 grams. Hmm. All right. Now we're going to talk about the Benrus. Benrus Company has been around since 1921. Transylvania is where I'm from. That's in Romania. The people who established Ben Roos Watch Company were three Romanians. So to me, that's very special that I got to buy one of their watches. Obviously, those three brothers, they're actually brothers. They don't own the company anymore. Unfortunately, they are no longer with us. So Ben Roos Company has changed ownership a few times. And uh, I'm not sure who owns them now, but this watch came out in uh, 2020, and there's not that many around. I don't know why, but I'm gonna try to explain my opinion on to why that is. There's probably maybe three pictures of this watch on Instagram, where there's millions of pictures of watches, of millions of pictures of anything, but watch enthusiasts, watch, watch community is very active there. And there are not that many pictures of this watch. Um, and I think I know why, but I am gonna just give you a little bit of details about this piece. This is a 41 millimeter by 49.37, almost 50 millimeters. And it's about 13.5 height. It has a Miyota movement with a date, obviously. It has a K1 mineral crystal Obviously, it has loom at every hour except through. Actually, it has a little bit of loom at three o'clock. 
open case back. You can see through, decorated some sort. Venrus, New York, automatic movement, 21 joules, stainless steel, blah, 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 blah. And a sticker. There you go. It doesn't say what kind of Muna movement this is, but. Um, so this is from 2020. I did not buy this myself. I, I got this on eBay, actually. From a gentleman from, uh, I think it was from Connecticut. And uh, I always wanted to buy a Benro's watch because, you know, at its core, it was established by Romanian people. And I'm really happy when I see a success story of a company that Romanians own it. Here's to my Romanians. Cheers to you. So I found this. I found it on, on Instagram first, and then I looked for one, and there it was. It has Benrus on the side of the watch. How about that? It's pretty special. And it has a marking here, 18 of 100. How about that? This has about four variants. Black one. There's one with a, I like a gray dial. That looks really nice, actually. There's a blue one, a blue dial. And then there's one that has a little bit more color on it. Still blue, but like a special edition. I think that one has um, a Salida movement. And it costs a lot more money also. So I have this for three, four months. It's a really nice watch. I'm gonna try to tell you what it comes with here. It comes in this small pouch, I guess you wanna call it. Insert the watch here, has paperwork with it. And uh, the watch comes on this really thick, thick leather strap. I have not worn this once. It's not my thing at all. It's 22 and it's about 20 at the uh, clasp. It's not a thing I forgot to tell you. It is 22 lug to lug. I mean, uh, um, size for the, for the bracelets and so forth. Now, let me turn this on. It has 100 meters water resistance and a really nice crown. This is a reissue from what Benrus says of their watch that was called Benrus Three Star, I believe, with a three star marking there. And that was a 37. This is a 41. It's a big watch. Let me put it on my hand and show you what it looks like. And then I'll give you some of my experiences and so forth with it and what I think about it. All right. I didn't finish the class, but that's okay. So there it is. It is a big watch. It wears big also. But it's very nice. Very unique. Beautiful. Put the... Now... Let me give you a little bit of my opinions about this watch. I like it, it's very nice. Some positives. It is a very unique piece. Uh, not that many around. The chances of you seeing somebody else with this watch on are very slim. Uh, if you have a hand, you know, a wrist of seven and a half or eight, this will look nice on you. Uh, 
This is not meant for people like me with six and three quarter wrists. It is a really big, big watch. It's a heavy watch. I'm not sure why they had to make it this big, but this is what it is. This dial is very, very nice, actually. Beautiful. I'm sure if you are a watch enthusiast, this dial design reminds you of the Railmaster, a lovely Omega. It does. Now, I'm not sure if that was the inspiration for this watch, but it definitely brings you to the Railmaster on a bigger scale. Um, the dial, the dial size is actually 36, actually 36.5 when I measured it. The whole dial, it is bigger than my whole Explorer watch. So it has a presence on the wrist, not just the 41. There's plenty of watches that have a 41 and smaller. This is supposedly a 43. This is a 42, but sure looks smaller, right? <laughs> but 42 or size of a watch is not everything. It's how it wears. So it's a nice piece, but you need a big wrist. Um, what else? I'm not sure why they had to do the open case back, but I mean, it's nice. It's nice to see a movement of any watch it's an interesting thing to look at now some negatives when this watch was released it was at the price of $1,195 that is a lot of money for a watch that has a Miota movement for a watch that has a K1 mineral crystal, and for a watch that is manufactured and assembled, who knows where? Somewhere in Asia, I'm assuming, it is not assembled here, because on the website, it doesn't say anything. But other watches they have, which I really like, like the Type 1, it's a beautiful watch, Benelux Type 1. That says proudly assembled in the USA. So I'm assuming this is not. So $1,200 is an insane amount of money for this watch. Right now, two years later, they still have this watch for sale out of 100. So that is not a good sign. As a company, as a reissue, as being part of watch community, you have to, to offer value. You cannot just capitalize on a name. And that's what I believe happened with this company at that point. I'm not sure how they do business now, who the owners are, what they do, how involved they are, but the pricing was just off the, off the charge for this watch. Now they're selling it for $525. Okay, getting closer to the true value. Um, I'll give you one quick example. If, let's say, Laurier Watches, which is a company I have a lot of respect for. I had a lot, I had five Laurier Watches. I've dealt with them, very respectful people, uh, very easy to deal with. If they were to bring a watch on the market and price it at $1,200 with the Miota movement, it is not gonna work, okay? Watch enthusiasts and the watch community, they are not idiots, okay? They're not gonna pay that kind of money for something that's overpriced for what it is. I paid for this on eBay under $200. I think it's worth that money. <laughs> it's worth more than that, but I found a really good deal on this watch and under 200 bucks, that is a steal. Now, 
It is way too big for me, so there's no way I can keep this watch, even though I love the way it looks. I love this crown. This crown and the pop of it is amazing. Whatever work they did on this crown, it's really, really good. I have other watches that are not this nice crown movement. This crown is very easy to put in, even with my gloves. It screws down really tight, has a nice star on it. So there's really nice things about this watch, but the, the pricing just, I think it left a lot of the watch community just disappointed and kind of insulted, I think. <laughs> you, you can ask that much money for a watch like this. Now, I'm not trying to bash Ben Roos. I have respect for everybody who makes watches. More power to you. Do the best you can and get watches out there. Uh, to their defense, this design is beautiful. Whoever did it, whoever did the design and, and the construction of this watch, they really hit it. I mean, they did a great, great job. It's an amazing looking watch. Just look at it. The size, this should have been a 39 or a 38, 37, even better. Keeping true to the original one, but they didn't. Let me give you a little bit of a loom, loom shot on this watch. The loom is nice. It doesn't last very long, but it's nice. Look at that, that's gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Now, that is not very nice. I have it, uh, I've been wearing it on this, um, this is a sailcloth, Artem, 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 whatever you want to call it. And I also have been wearing it on this mesh. And this mesh looks really nice on this watch. Maybe I'll just swap them quick. Let me do that. So I'll tell you what it looks, show you what it looks like on a mesh. I'll be right back. Okay, I'll give you a, guess, a quick wrist roll on a mesh. This looks fantastic. A lot better. They do offer this on their website. Uh, not this particular color, but the blue one they offer on a mesh. And on a mesh, it looks really nice though. That I have to say. If it was a little bit thin, I mean, I would rock this watch a lot, but it's very, very thick and big for me. It's a shame, but that's the way it is. I mean, you don't have a choice. So, beautiful watch. Now it's at the price where, you know, it's acceptable, $500. That's not bad, okay? So, Ben Roos, I'm happy you finally came to a, you know, realistic expectation of pricing because it's a really nice watch and your other watches are very nice i have to say it's not all bad timekeeping miyota it keeps time really nice I, I cannot complain about that beautiful watch that's all i got this is raise my glass to you watch people whoever takes the time to watch these videos I hope you're pouring yourself a glass of wine also, or beer, or whatever it is, and enjoy watches. That's all I got for today. If you like this video, you can give it a like, subscribe, whatever you want. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.